I think I think all good leaders have got to be humble, but that doesn't mean to say that they go around like Uriah Heep in Charles Dickens' books, saying, I'm very humble, I'm very humble. Um, well, it's what are the symptoms of, of humility? Uh, a biddable spirit, somebody who can change their mind, somebody who can admit that they were wrong in the right contexts, somebody who, when they think they've got an idea, can be talked into a better idea if they're persuaded that it's, it's held, somebody who believes and expects that they're going to receive truth and insights from other people when they meet them. Mm. That at, the end, at the end of this conversation, I am actually going to be able to lead better and more effectively and more wisely because I've had this conversation with you than I had before it. Mm -hmm. um, and an attunedness to the Holy Spirit. And by that, I don't mean necessarily kind of traditional evangelical piety. I mean, how long you spend in prayer in the morning, but just a, an extension of the idea of the provenient spirit is in the most weird places and sometimes the most unexpected places, people humble you by what they are doing and they give you an example of what it is that they're about. And you suddenly think to yourself, that's reproducible. Mm. <laughs> there, are, there is a way of actually saying to people, I remember, for instance, going into um, Sarawak in uh, East Borneo and, talk, and seeing a woman who had actually uh, come uh, and built new longhouses, new longhouses, the traditional longhouses of the headhunters. You go and you see them, if you've been to Sarawak, they're, they're almost kind of like tourist things to go and see. But she had been there, she was African, and then she'd gone back to Africa. And then as the AIDS epidemic completely ravaged where she was, she was in Northern Sierra Leone. Mm. She decided that the way to combat that was to build an African version of a longhouse so that the families who had a parent remaining and families that had no parents but children got put together in extended families in mm. longhouses to create new communities. And I sort of looked at this and listened to this woman. I was virtually in tears and I thought, you have got a fresh expression of church. You know, I have no idea at the moment what it means in terms of Methodists doing this, that and the other, because we're not really ravaged with age in this society. But there is something here that I've got to learn and keep in the back of my head for whenever it needs to come out of that filing system and say, have you thought about this? That's about humility, isn't it? Oh, absolutely. 